taking a peek at the SYNC 4 media screen inside of the F-150. Now, I'm going to walk you through all of the basic features and functions that you need to know. Starting off, along the very top, you've got current inside temperature, outside temperature, your current time, and then any connection options that were available. So if you were connected to Wi-Fi, etc. Along the outside, you've got this little tray. So you can push there if you wanted to go into this little graphical interface instead, or if you wanted to go back into this main menu there instead. So you've got a few different graphic looks for the actual side panel there. You can see there, a mix of a few different things. The off-road status is kind of cool because as you're rotating the wheel, pitch and roll status, etc., will show up there. It's kind of nice, but you've got a few different options that are available. You can see there, this is the option for audio along the very bottom left. Sources, you've got AM, FM, Sirius XM, and Bluetooth. If you had a USB stick with MP3s on it, that would be available as an option. So there are a lot of different things you could look at here. But if you start off just by sources, so FM to start, you can direct tune this way. So if you wanted to tune to a different station, you've got the flexibility to do it. You can also push the voice command prompt if you wanted to be able to change stations that way instead. Once you've tuned to whatever station you want, you could overwrite or save a preset by doing a press and hold there. And as you can see, it saved that station in for us. You can kind of go plus this way, seek that way out instead if you want. You've got a series of sound settings along the very bottom. So tone settings, usually recommend treble down by two, mid-range balance and bass cranked by three generally gives pretty good audio. You can adjust out the balance and fade. So if you're the only one in the vehicle versus more of like a full audio experience for everybody all around, you've got that option. Speed compensated volume. As you're going faster or slower, it's automatically going to raise or lower the volume for you. Now, other one is that if you're in Sirius XM, that's going to give you a few other options. So when a song is playing, you can hit this icon in order to save either the artist or the song. So if those ones come on, you'll get a notification letting you know that it's playing on another station. And then you can also see a series of other options. So if you wanted to create a unique listener, if you wanted to show different settings for each individual listener, you could do that. So blocking explicit content, tuning to start, so you're tuning to that specific station. And the other one I always recommend updating is the max preset pages. And this is especially true if you're a big audiophile and you love listening to a series of different options because that's going to give you the option for up to 30 individual presets. As you can see there, a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. It's kind of nice. You can hop into your sound settings, start over, or go into the, any of the other audio sources that are available. Next up is adding in a phone. So currently, as of right now, no phones are connected. So you're just going to hit add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Looking for F-150. We can change the name of that one. I'll show you how it's Confirm done in a sec. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up. Do I want to allow contacts and favorites to sync? I'm going to say no. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Perfect. Okay. 911 assist. I always recommend turning this one on. And the big reason why is because if you're ever in an accident and the vehicle is connected to a phone, it's automatically going to die on 911 for you if it's a serious collision. So definitely recommend doing that. And then you've also got the option of setting up Apple CarPlay and it's wireless. So all you're going to do, continue and then enable. Perfect. And as you can see there, fully connected. So as of right now, we're in this little split screen. You could push this little icon along the very top left in order to jump into a full screen Apple CarPlay instead. Look at that, beautiful. And that's as full screen as it's getting. So you're still gonna have the basic information along the bottom in the top tray. But still, that's pretty nice. Really nice, I like that. So you can see there what's currently going on with our outside temperature, etc. But on the Apple CarPlay side of things, it's current time and connection with battery level which map application was open last, which audio application was open last, and which miscellaneous application was opened. And then you can go back to this little home screen, icon view, whatever the case may be. But I mean, you saw there, like very responsive. So I can't believe this isn't fixed yet. So we've got this weird little like split screen bug for some reason on the Apple map side of things, but you can zoom in and out this way. There's just no pinch to zoom capabilities on any map application in Apple CarPlay. So yeah, drag and drop. No, not even let me drag and drop. So in order to get around, go on this way, zoom in and out, back forward that way instead. Hopping into Waze, it's going to be the same idea. So Waze, no drag, no pinch. So you're zooming in and out this way instead. 
Uh, you can at least use all the map applications there, which is kind of nice, and they work relatively the same. So that's good. So along the outside there, so you can hit done, and this little gear icon lets you change out some route options, so avoiding highways, toll roads, ferries, and things like that. But the map application, straightforward. Same idea with podcasts. You can browse, look at your current library, whatever the case may be. Audiobooks are available. Live One, which is a radio app. So there's a series of different applications that are available for Apple CarPlay. And one nice thing is that you can press and hold the voice command prompt on the steering wheel if you wanted to activate your Siri Assistant. So you've got that available as an option. Pushing CarPlay there does nothing, but you can hit your phone list along the very top, and that's going to bring you back to this screen instead. So you could launch back into CarPlay, your navigation, etc., along the very bottom there. Now, one nice thing about CarPlay is that on your phone settings, if you go into General Settings, CarPlay, you're going to find your vehicle. You can forget it, turn off CarPlay while the phone is locked, or you can customize the launcher. So let's say if you're a big fan of having your podcast there along with, let's say, Waze, you can do a drag and drop in order to adjust it that way. You can delete certain apps from the vehicle as well. So from CarPlay essentially. So it's put them on the very bottom for more apps, but it's physically removed them from the screen. If you don't like what you've done, so you've kind of played around with this a little bit too much, you're like, ah, I'm not really crazy about the new look. You can hit reset, reset home layout in order to bring you back to the factory default layout there instead. It's really straightforward. You can hop back into your factory navigation or back into CarPlay there if you wanted to. If you hop back into phone list along the very top, you've got a series of other options. You could just reconnect. So you're essentially disconnecting from CarPlay and then reconnecting to the phone for Bluetooth. So whether that's for the phone, for audio, for a mixture of both instead. You can jump into phone settings, go into your additional settings for managing contacts. You can look at text message options, roaming warnings, battery notifications, and things like that. Oh, I know that's quite a little bit of info, but that's how you set up an iPhone inside of Sync 4 in the F-150. Setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So if you weren't on the screen, you could obviously hit phone in order to go back to your phone. But if you were connected to your phone there and you needed to set up another one, easiest thing to do, go into settings, phone list, and then you've got all of your options there. So we're just going to add Search a phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Picking this up and we're just waiting for F-150 to show up again. There we go. So Ford F-150. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up. Perfect. For your safety, please stay alert to change in road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. So I pressed uh, no on that one. So deny for contacts and messages just because this isn't my car. But then you can enable there. And what we're doing is connecting to Android Auto now. So it'll take a few seconds. There we go. Continue through, and look at that, fully connected, beautiful. And you've got this little split screen going on there again as well. So what you could do along the very bottom left side, you see you've got Android Auto, but you've got this little icon. It's such a weird position for it, but you can push there in order to jump into full screen Android Auto instead. You're still in this little split screen though for the map. So if you push the map icon there, that's gonna let you go to a full screen, back to a split screen, or to a little icon view. So you've got Google Maps and you've got Waze that are available right through this vehicle, which is great, not through Android Auto. Now, if for whatever reason Waze isn't showing up, if you want to be able to add it in, check in in the description of the video. I put together a little walkthrough explaining how do you can connect Waze to Android Auto if it's not showing up as an option. But this is nice, nice and simple. Very similar to what you saw Google Maps on the Apple side of things too. Got the little gear icon for route options, so avoiding toll, uh, toll roads, ferries, and things like that. Icon view there to get back to that split screen. You can also do a press and hold on the voice command prompt if you wanted to activate the Google Assistant instead. And then very similar to the Apple CarPlay side, along the very top there, you've got your current connection status. You've got what map applications open last, some miscellaneous applications, your settings, and then there's also your little assistant there. So you've got a little bit of flexibility here, not, not a ton, but you've got a few things. Hopping into the little icon view here, there's quite a few apps that have got installed, but there are so many more apps that are available for Android Auto and for Apple CarPlay. So if you want a full application list, you'll find that down in the description of the video. One nice thing is that you've got the flexibility to customize things a little bit. So on your phone, if you go to Android Auto, you're gonna be at Android Auto settings, you can customize the launcher, you can turn a few things off if you want, Big one would be the customizing launcher though. 
it works kind of similar to the iPhone side of things, but there's some differences. And that's that any changes that we make, you actually have to restart Android Auto for the changes to take into effect. So you have to hop out of Android Auto on your phone, hop out of it here, launch back in for any customization changes to take into effect. You can still customize it a little bit though, which is kind of nice. If you go to phone list along the very top now, you're connected to either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Now, what you could do is jump back into, so just the Galaxy connection there, but you can also do a mix and match. So you can either do Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but you can do any of these four kind of in tandem together. And even if you had multiple phones, like more phones connected to the vehicle, it's who do you want connection priority to first for the phone? And then do you want to have somebody connected for audio? So if you have one phone for all of your audio and one phone for phone calls, you can kind of do a mix and match and set it up that way. If you wanted to delete a phone from the vehicle, you go to phone settings, whatever phone you want deleted and hit yes. That's the same thing. You go to phone settings, delete, yes. And that's remove both phones from the vehicle. So it's that set simple setting up Android and iPhone devices inside of the F-150. And that's the basics of setting up phones. Next up, hopping into navigation. So navigation, you're either gonna have connected navigation that's built in, like what we're looking at here, or there's connected navigation. So connected nav, you actually wouldn't have the option of searching for any addresses and things like that until you activate the vehicle through your Ford Pass account. So that's new for the 2024 F-150 as well, is you can no longer get the built-in navigation. So what that means is that after the year of connected services are up, if you don't subscribe or continue on with the service, this thing reverts to a dead moving map where it essentially just follows you around without you being able to type in an address. But through those connected services, you would be able to continue to use this thing just as a regular GPS instead. And then you can just hook up through Android or iPhone devices to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze if you wanted to. But with the factory nav side of things, you could push this button in order to zoom out to a full screen. And it is nice and responsive. It's good. You can push this little button there in order to get to map orientation, vo uh, voice. So if you want an either voice or tone settings or whatever the case may be, when you're coming to upcoming turns, you've got that option of selecting whichever one. You can avoid things on the route. So if you wanted to avoid highways, toll roads, ferries, etc., you can show different things on the map. Trailer routing. So if you're hauling a trailer, there are some trailer route options available. It's kind of useful though, so you can optimize for trailer routing, so you're not going through crazy off-road terrain and things like that while you're pulling a trailer. For uh, routing and map preferences, the big ones here are going to be, do you want the fastest or the most eco-friendly route? Dynamic reroute, if there's an accident, then it's going to reroute you to a faster route instead. Breadcrumbs is a neat one, because with breadcrumbs turned on, as you go to different locations, it's going to drop a little dot on all the areas that you've gone to, or your little breadcrumb. So you can see which areas that you've gone to. Let's see, nothing else excited there. You'll notice some things are grayed out, and that's because the connected services haven't been set up as of yet. But once you set up the connected services through Ford Pass, you would have those options available. Some more settings, which we've already seen those. Searching for addresses is straightforward. So you can search by GPS coordinates if you want to. You can just start typing in an address, search for point of interest icons too. So if you wanted to go something like Tim Hortons, so there you go, you've got a few different options that are available. So just gonna select one. If your phone is connected, you could call, save it as a favorite, look for parking that's available. You can push this little button if you wanted to see different route options that were available. You could then start the route if you wanted to. Please proceed to the highlighted road. There we go. Then you can add in another stop. So if you wanted to do a stop along the way to say maybe you wanted to go to a gas station first, whatever the case may be, you're just going to hit add stop. So this little flag icon in order to be able to set up different waypoints along the way. Pushing this gives you the full route overview. You can mute out. So if you don't want to get notifications as a turn's coming up, you can mute out or you can hit cancel there in order to cancel the route. And then you can quickly press there in order to restart it again. So you can restart. Look at the end destination. You can collapse the map, go full screen again, start, or cancel it out. You can look at your recently gone to destinations. You saved your, your, all of your saved destinations. So if you've saved home addresses, work addresses, addresses for friends, doctors, whatever the case may be, you'd be able to look at it through that way instead. You can see what direction you're currently facing and then what, what city you're currently in there too, along with your GPS coordinates. So if you ever get lost off-road, whatever the case may be, on your map, 
select through in order to get to these options instead. There's a little favorite button along the very bottom, and that's going to let you choose between any of these different options. So let's say if we had it set up for driver assistant settings. So we look there, hop off, and then if you push, that gets you into your driver assistant settings instead. You can then edit it out if you wanted to have it as a different button. So this one essentially is going to be a button that you could, it's some limitations, but you can have it set up to more or less do whatever you'd like to in the confines of these options. Some basics for apps, so Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, etc. Setting options that are available. So radio, we've already seen. So you've got preset pages, AM, FM, etc. You can add in a phone, options for navigation, sound settings, which we've already seen series of different vehicle settings that are available. So 30 minute max idle, I would definitely recommend turning this one off if you're going to a drive-in. But other than that, there's rear occupant alert. So when you go to turn the vehicle off, it's going to tell you to check the back seats. Easy entry exit. So with this one enabled, if you're in an F-150 with power seats, it's going to lower them and back them up so you can get in and out of the vehicle a little bit easier. My key gives you the flexibility of setting up limitations on the key fob. So things like max speed, max audio volume, and things like that remote start setup. So if you're remote starting, do you actually do you even want to be able to remote start? But if you do, what happens? Climate control, is it based off of the, your last settings or do you want the vehicle to determine what the cabin temperature should be? And it's the same thing with the heated, ventilated first row seats, heated steering wheel, etc. Do you want the vehicle to determine whether or not those ones are coming on? Yes or no. And then how long do you want the remote start to last? So 5, 10 or 15 minutes options for your wipers there. So courtesy wipe, if you've got your windshield wipers going, what courtesy wipe is going to do is it'll wait until the wipe cycle is gone and then it'll go one more time in order to get rid of any excess liquid that might be on the windshield. Two different options for the power tailgate, so whether it's power or manual. Uh, let's see here. Different options for lighting, so auto high beam. So with auto high beam turned on, if you're in the auto mode, if the vehicle recognizes that high beams are needed, it'll automatically turn them on. If it recognizes somebody's oncoming, it's going to lower them before turning them off completely. There's options for welcome lighting as well. Auto lamp delay. So when you go to lock the vehicle, do the lamps just turn off? Do they stay on for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 120 seconds instead? And then there's options for zone lighting. So whether or not you can override the lamps or include your reversing lamps once you get into the zone lighting itself. I'll show you that one in just a second. Uh, ambient light. So there are ambient light options available in the vehicle, strictly just for the brightness of the light itself, not for the color, unfortunately. Options for lock, but the big one here would be remote unlock. So when you go to unlock the vehicle, do all doors become unlocked or is it just the driver's side door? So just general safety. And then for some of these other ones, if you shut a door but don't shut it completely and you go to lock, you're going to get a chirp letting you know that something hasn't happened properly options for your mirrors. So if you're in an F-150 with power folding mirrors, you can have them auto fold for you. So when you go to lock the vehicle, they'll fold in for you. And then door keypad code. So there's a five digit factory code, and then you can input your own factory number or your own five digit numbers there instead. Options for clock. So as of right now, you're in the just regular 12 hour mode. So if you'd prefer that military time instead, you could do that. And then you can also have it auto update the time based off of your GPS location. I know sometimes if you're a little bit close to an actual time zone change, this might be a little bit wonky. So I usually recommend in that case, just turning it off, but you can easily adjust out hours, minutes, whatever the case may be. You can set up unique profiles. Big benefit there is that it's going to remember a ton of different things. So your driver assistant settings, navigation, phone, audio, so your presets and things like that. So if you have more than one person driving the vehicle, would recommend going through, just enter in a name, if you had driver's seat memory that would show up, you could link your key fob and things like that right to your own unique profile. If you're the only one driving the vehicle, not a big deal, but if you're more than one person driving, set up a profile. It's a lifesaver. General settings, you can change between English, Spanish, or French, Celsius or Fahrenheit, change your tire pressure units and things like that. So if you're in the States, in Canada, whatever the case may be, you can flip between any of these different modes if you want to. Other big one to point out is reset. So if your Ford Pass app on your phone is giving you problems, you can reset that way. You can also perform just a generic factory reset. So if the whole screen's giving you issues, just perform reset. If you're selling your vehicle, bring it back to the factory default settings there instead. 
options for the display. So as bright as this display is, if you find it to be a bit too much, you can turn the display off, button press to bring it back to life, or you can go to a calming screen instead with the date and time. Now this is technically the daytime mode. You can lock it into either daytime or nighttime permanently. That one's gonna be a matter of preference. I personally love that blue, but you can have it flip. So it's gonna to jump to that blue, the dark mode instead later on at night, or you can lock out either mode if you want to. And then you can adjust the brightness of the screen there too. Options for connectivity. So this one, in order to change your vehicle name, you're going to change vehicle name. So rather than just being generic Ford F-150, Bob's ride, Sally's truck, whatever the case may be. So in order to be able to change your vehicle name, that's where you're going to make it happen. Then there's some other options for connected vehicle features. Big one here, I just recommend connecting to a Wi-Fi network at home. Big reason why is to tie it in with your software updates. So updates would definitely recommend keeping automatic updates turned on and have it check for updates later on at night because it might take three, four hours for the update to download and then actually install in the vehicle. So would recommend typically whenever, or you can customize the schedule if you want to, but later on at night is generally a good idea for the auto updates. Ford Assistant gives you a ton of different options. So this one here is the command list. So you can do things like change songs, radio stations, navigate using your voice and things like that. The command help gives you the option of everything that you can do. I definitely recommend getting the hang of this because you can change temperature out. You can look, use factory navigation, radio, Sirius XM, etc., all using your voice. The confirmation list is this thing that came up when you push the voice command prompt on the steering wheel. Phone confirmation, do you wanna call such and such person, yes or no? Advanced mode means you won't get as many notifications. And then you can also have it listen for a wake word. So rather than pressing the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, you say, okay, Ford. And it's gonna pull up the command prompt for you there instead. So you can use any of these four different wake phrases instead. Kind of nice though. Definitely said, definitely recommend keeping getting used to this one because being able to change the climate using your voice and radio stations is really beneficial. Covered off 911 assist already, so that's going to automatically dial 911 if you're in a serious accident. Valet mode locks the screen out, so a valet driver can't look through any of your different settings. There are a series of different features that are available. So starting off with driver assistant settings. So first one is going to be auto hold. So with auto hold turned on, if you go to drive the vehicle and then you come to a complete stop, take your foot off the brake, the car is not going to move. Useful setting. Cruise control, there are a few different options. So if you're not a fan of the adaptive cruise, so the set and forget it, you can go to just normal cruise instead. But there's adaptive cruise with lane centering. So that one is going to keep you perfectly balanced in your lane. So it's very different from the lane keeping system. The lane centering, it's not quite up to par to Ford's blue cruise system, but it is very, very close as long as it recognizes the lane markings. And then speed sign recognition with a tolerance level. So where that comes into play is, let's say if the adaptive cruise control is set up and you've got the tolerance level set to zero and the speed goes from 100 down to 80. If you've got it set to zero, it's automatically gonna lower the speed for you to 80 kilometers an hour or miles, whatever the case may be instead. And it goes the opposite way. So let's say if the speed goes from 80 to 100, if you've got this set up, it's automatically gonna increase your vehicle speed if the adaptive cruise control system is turned on and then you can go plus or minus up to 30 either way. So that's essentially your tolerance of how much faster or slower you wanna go over or under the speed limit, et cetera. Next up, speed limit assist. I'm not a big fan of the assist, but if you wanted to get speed warnings and things like that, you could. Lane keeping system works three different ways. So way number one is you're gonna get an alert. So if you start to veer over into a lane without signaling, it's either going to give you a little bit of alert, so it'll shake the steering wheel, the aid is gonna nudge you back into your lane and the alert and the aid will do both. So the alert, I want you to think of it almost as if you're running over rumble pavement. So it gives you like a nice little steering wheel vibration there. And then it's the intensity of the steering wheel vibration. Options for pre-collision assist. Same idea, lots of safety settings, but if you didn't want the vehicle to automatically break for you in case of a potential collision, you could get rid of these settings as well. Evasive steering turns the steering wheel into like a hypersensitivity mode. So if you're going to get into a potential collision, think of it like sport mode driving where you can get in, uh, get away from a potential collision a little bit easier. Blind spot system. So that lets you know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. So there's a little thing that highlights in the side view mirror to let you know that somebody's entered your blind spot. 
your parking sensors, so whether or not the front and rear sensors are turned on, yay or nay. If you obviously didn't have front parking sensors, that wouldn't show up. Rear cross traffic alert. So as you go to back up, if there's an obstacle in behind you, yeah, 100% there is there, but if you were backing up, if somebody's coming perpendicular, so from the left or the right hand side, it's going to let you know of a potential collision that way. So that is kind of nice reverse brake assist. If you start backing up and there's an obstacle behind you there, it's going to automatically slam on the brakes for you. And then the driver alert. So if you start to veer over too many times with that signaling, eventually it's going to tell you that you should probably take a break. Next up, the options for zone lighting. So you can override the lamps there and turn them on for the outside lights, side view mirror lights, etc. So it's kind of nice. So if you're working later on at night, you can turn on your outside lighting just to give you a little bit more working light. Options for towing. I love this. And the big reason why is because if you've never connected a trailer before, it talks you through how to set all of these things up. Step-by-step -step process. So very useful. So conventional gooseneck and fifth wheel towing gives you the options for all of them. I just think that's a brilliant system. You can add in multiple trailers. And then the reason why you want to add them in, so you've got trailer sway control. So if the vehicle senses that there's trailer sway going on, it's automatically going to apply engine braking to get that sway under control. Really useful though. And you've also got a digital owner's manual. So I know this video covers off a lot of info, but if you want to know general maintenance schedules, if you're getting any weird lights in the cluster screen and things like that, you can look at category searches, visual searches, videos, and things like that. So if you're changing out the oil yourself, you're not really sure what maintenance schedules to follow, what type of oil to add in and things like that, that's where you're going in order to make it happen. But there are so many different options. Like if you wanted to check the engine level, it shows you how to do it. It's pretty neat. Like I said, you can do category search, visual search, and a few other things, but that is quite a lot of information, I know, but that's everything that you need to know about the SYNC 4 screen inside of the F-150.